Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another video from the channel, The Board of Knowledge. Today we're going to witness together one of the most incredible spectacles of nature, the Northern Lights, a true light show in the sky. Get ready to be amazed by the beauty of the Northern Lights and unravel the mysteries behind this phenomenon. So leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let's go to the video. The Aurora Borealis, also known as the Northern Lights, is an optical phenomenon that occurs in the northernmost regions of the planet. Imagine a real celestial dance with curtains of multicolored lights and incredible formations, dancing in the night sky, like a carnival in the sky. These curtains of light are the result of a magical encounter, charged particles coming from the sun, hitting our atmosphere. It's like a cosmic soccer game with the Earth in the goal. The Sun, our star, is always releasing a stream of charged particles called the solar wind. It's like the Sun is always giving off an energetic sneeze. These particles, when they get close to Earth, come face to face with our magnetic field, a kind of invisible protective shield, like a force field. And when these particles collide with the atoms and molecules in our atmosphere, they transfer some of their energy, causing them to glow. It's like when you rub your hands together in the winter to warm them up. The color of light we see depends on the type of atom that was energized and the altitude at which the collision occurred. It's like a cosmic game of pool with vibrant colors. To truly understand the northern lights, we need to take a trip to the center of our solar system, the sun, our very own star. At the heart of the sun, things are really cooking. It's like a giant nuclear furnace, constantly fusing hydrogen atoms into helium, releasing an incredible amount of energy. It's like a cosmic pressure cooker. This energy spreads throughout space, reaching Earth and powering life here. It's like the sun is our giant battery. But the sun doesn't just send light and heat, no way. It also sends a constant stream of charged particles, like a bunch of energetic ants, mainly protons and electrons, that travel super fast through space, faster than a rocket. This constant flow of charged particles is what we call the solar wind. It's like the sun is always blowing particles in every direction. The Earth, with its magnetic field, acts as a shield, protecting us from this solar breath it's like the Earth always has an umbrella up. But when the sun gets more excited, like when there are solar flares, we can see even more spectacular northern lights. It's like the sun decides to put on a special show. Our planet has an incredible defense mechanism that shields us from the furious attack of the solar wind, the Earth's magnetic field, our invisible shield. This shield is produced in the core of our planet, a super hot liquid iron core, spinning non-stop like a giant blender. It's like the Earth has a heart that generates a force field. The magnetosphere, the fancy name for this shield, deflects most of the solar wind, like a cosmic traffic detour. Without the magnetosphere, life on Earth would be impossible. It would be like living in a giant microwave oven. However, at the poles, the magnetosphere is weaker, and some solar wind particles manage to enter Earth's atmosphere. It's like the solar wind finds an open door at the poles. When these charged particles from the solar wind collide with the atmosphere, they interact with the atoms and molecules of oxygen and nitrogen, which are like the little bricks of air that we breathe. To return to normal, the atoms release the extra energy in the form of light creating the vibrant and dancing colors of the northern lights. It's like the atmosphere is throwing a luminous party. The collision in the atmosphere. Showtime. The charged particles, coming from solar storms, finally reach Earth's atmosphere, and the result is the aurora borealis. It's like the atmosphere is being showered with energy, Upon entering the atmosphere through the weak points of the magnetic field at the poles, the solar particles collide with the atoms and molecules of the air. It's like a cosmic game of billiards. These collisions transfer energy to the atmospheric atoms, leaving them switched on. 
It's like the atoms are getting an extra shot of espresso. To return to their normal state, the atoms release this extra energy by emitting a photon, which is like a little packet of light. It's like the atom is striking a match. The color of the light depends on which atom was energized and the amount of energy it absorbed. It's like each atom has its favorite type of light. Oxygen is responsible for the most common colors of the aurora, green and red. It's like oxygen is a fan of green and red. Nitrogen, on the other hand, usually emits blue or violet light. It's like nitrogen prefers cooler colors. Is it true it only happens at the poles? The Aurora Borealis is a VIP event only for special guests up in the high latitudes. The explanation lies in the relationship between Earth's magnetic field and the solar wind. At the poles, the magnetic field lines meet and plunge into Earth. It's like the poles are the entrance doors to the party. It's like they're dance floors for the auroras. When the sun is more active, auroras can be seen in places farther from the poles. The tilt of the Earth also influences the appearance of the polar auroras. But I heard it can be seen in other regions. Is that really true? The aurora borealis is typically visible in the polar regions, and yes, it can be seen in other parts of the planet during certain events due to solar activity. When intense solar flares or coronal mass ejections occur, a larger amount of charged particles is released from the sun and hits Earth with greater force. This causes an expansion of the aurora's visibility area, making them visible at lower latitudes, far from the poles. Earth's magnetic field, which normally directs solar particles towards the polar regions, can be overloaded during these solar storms. This allows the particles to travel further, reaching regions like Central Europe, the United States, or even Brazil, in very rare cases. These events are known as geomagnetic storms, and the stronger the storm, the greater the chance of seeing auroras in other parts of the planet. These events are monitored by scientists, and when a solar storm is detected, predictions are made about where the auroras might be visible. Beauty and science united, forming an unbeatable duo. The Aurora Borealis, which for a long time was explained by myths and legends, is now understood by science. It's like we've figured out a magic trick, but we still think it's amazing. But the beauty of the Aurora Borealis goes beyond scientific explanation. It's breathtaking. It's a spectacle that connects us to the vastness of the universe, to the power of nature, and to our smallness in the face of such grandeur. It's like we're standing before a cosmic work of art. Seeing the Aurora Borealis dancing in the sky is a unique and unforgettable experience. It's like we're inside a dream. For many ancient cultures, the Northern Lights were divine messages, bridges to the spiritual world, or signs of good or bad omens. It's like the sky was trying to communicate. Today, even understanding the science behind the Aurora Borealis, the magic and mystery remain. It's like we're still enchanted by the magic trick, even though we know how it's done. And so ends our adventure in search of the Northern Lights. And now you know how the Aurora Borealis arises, a spectacle that begins in the sun, travels through space, and ends with an explosion of colors in the night sky of the polar regions. We hope this video has sparked your curiosity to learn more about our planet and the universe around us. If you like this video and want to learn more about the mysteries of our planet and the universe, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for more amazing content. The cosmos is a place full of wonders waiting to be discovered. Until next time.